Good. What's going on, Todd? Not much. Just got, you know, last week we were in San Diego. So we were, we were elevated a little bit because uh, Hollywood was on strike with both their writers and their actors. So the, they were told not to show up. So everybody got moved up a notch. So the comic book toy people all got moved up one notch. So it turned out pretty good. So. Yeah, it's been a busy week for you, I bet, huh? Yeah, just to, and then doing some follow up. You know, uh, San Diego can be pretty hectic, um, so it's tough to do any sort of real business. So what you do is you make a note and or collect people's business cards, and then you do you circle around back in the next couple of weeks uh, and sort of follow up on all your leads and your your interactions and see if anything sort of fruitful comes out of it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, tonight, I know we're doing uh, the first ever portfolio review, which is actually your idea a few months back. So I'm looking forward to this. And we actually have our first artist up with his portfolio. His name's Joshua, uh, the Art Jedi. I'll let him introduce himself. But what, Jake, I'm sure we'll share his screen and we can get this thing rolling. Um, hello, Mr. McFarlane. I'm a massive fan. Your work has inspired me to get into comics. So looking really looking forward to this portfolio review. How, how long, how long do you, you've been, uh, sort of pushing in this direction? Um, so I started when I was 15. So that's about three years ago. Uh, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me see if I can make Jake's bigger. Oh, cool. If I just keep clicking on it, it gets, keeps getting bigger, Jake, or what? Uh, you can also control me and I can zoom into where you want me to zoom into. Okay. So, um, I don't even, so what should I call you then? Art? Uh, or Josh. Jedi? Just Josh. Oh, Josh, Josh. oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and talk about some specifics for what you have here, Josh, but at the same time, talk about it in generic form so that if anybody else is listening or I don't get to their work, some of the stuff that we're talking about will make sense to them too. Is yeah, that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, one of the things is, and I don't know how many pages you've given uh, Jake. Did we, did we give them a quota or, yeah, or what? It's uh, five per person. All right. So, I'm gonna look at the. I'm gonna look at the five real quick. Um, but no honesty, Josh. Anybody else? I can. I can. I can see it in three pages, right? So, I think drawing's a little bit like being an athlete. Uh, yeah. When I used to go and scout kids for little league all the way up to seventeen, I mean, I can. I can tell. I can tell in four minutes, right? Who's the athletes and who are the kids? that can be coached up and then who are the kids that just don't have it. Right. So, um, so let me, let me just see if you can run through these real, really quickly. So there's page one. And again, I, I, I'm not assuming that it's in any particular order. Uh, you, you can tell me later. One, two, three, four, five, so those are five. Okay, so let's start with this page. I mean, and, and again, I'm just going to be talking. I'm going to try and give everybody, Josh, about 10 minutes uh, and then move on. Uh, and you're welcome to listen to what I say about the other people. I may I may start uh, repeating myself. So uh, since you're the first one, you're probably going to get the most comments uh, because I'm probably going to say, hey, remember what I said to Josh? Um so, so this page right here, in terms of composition, which, which, and again, let's define the word. Composition means, you know, what is it you're drawing? So you've got uh, what appears to be some sort of cool rad uh, character standing there. It looks like he's got a cape or something, and then in the background, um, it looks like a city, and then yeah. some smoke and energy or something behind him. Okay, so. One of the things, one of the things that I think is helpful is to give areas where your eye can rest, right? And so when I look at this page, again, 
good drawing, good composition. I like it. It would make a, a, a good cover. My, my first reaction to it is, is like, where, where does my eye get to relax? Because if, if you look at like all the line work in the cape that he's holding with his left hand, right? right. And, then, and then you look at the sash or cape or whatever it is that's now swinging like around his hip and swinging off. And then mm-hmm. even even what's going around his uh, his hip, you're doing a lot of you're doing a lot of lines, and I get it because you're trying to add detail and you're trying to do you know uh, something that looks like it's quote unquote wrinkled. Um, the The problem can be though is that all those tiny lines then can run into a little bit of what you're also doing on the pants, right? So right. you're you're coming in there and you're doing some wrinkles on the pants, um, and then if I look at Jake, can you blow can you blow it up just a little bit and go to the top half, like from the waist up or something? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then if 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 you if you go in tighter here, and again cross hatching, which is super cool, um, like even above what you have. Uh, you know the hand, the left hand that's gripping the cape. See, see, you you've done some cross hatching up above there, right? Yeah. Again, to my, I got a trained eye, and I know that there's a subtle difference. But in black and white, especially small, you don't see the difference. Um, and I'm a big believer, Josh. Anybody, um, never draw so that your colorist has to save you. Um, because if it looks good in black and white, then a good colorist is going to be able to basically even add more to it. What you don't want to be in a position is that your colorist basically has to create your depth for you, and your colorist has to add, like separate things for you, because again, in black and white, it's not very clear, right? So right. if you look at, uh, like, uh, under the armpit is right armpit the one that's got the arm with all the energy or something like that so you got some nice cross hatching sort of a little bit reminds me a little bit of some of the stuff that jim lee used to do with scott williams and then but you're sort of doing the exact same thing um with the cross hatching of the cape that's going behind his back underneath that same armpit right yeah and yeah. and if i was it, uh, unfortunately josh i i um if i was doing this live or whatever i what I would do is I would say, I think that that space of the cape behind the shadow, uh, I mean, under the armpit going along sort of the rib cage down there, for the most part, I would have made that 90% black, right? So one of the things that uh, is missing just a little bit on this, if you, go, if you now pull back just a little bit, Jake, is that uh, there's very little patches of black. Now, here's... Here's what black does for you. Black is also a place that can rest your eye, right? Um, and so it's not an accident when you see people draw Batman. They usually make like the inside or the outside or all of it black. Um, even spawn, you know, sometimes when I, even on the cow and on the cape, when I've got the cape flipping and flopping, I usually say, okay, one side's going to be black um, so that it, it becomes easier to see the the turning of it, like, oh, okay, that's turning on itself because now the black side shown instead of the, the red side or whatever. Um, so if, if, I was, if I was sitting here in, uh, and I had it on my screen, what I would be doing is going into a couple of those lines and eliminating some so that you got some open patches of white. And then in some areas, I would actually be adding a little more black so that, again, I'm creating... Uh, a little bit more separation. Uh, what it also does, it also gives a sense that there's a light potentially in the room um, and that the light is coming and hitting him. So in other words, you could have easily put a little bit of black underneath that sash that's flowing and hitting his leg so that it feels like that the sash is sort of in front of them. And that's why I would have put a little bit of black in the tape behind them again just to create a little bit of that uh depth that's in there but um and and if you look at some of your lines up in the shoulders 
uh, the, those lines are competing with some, if you go up a little bit, yeah, if you go in a little bit tighter, some of those lines are competing just a bit with some of the lines of the city, right? And so you've got all this, like you've got all this beautiful line work for the city, and then you're trying to overdo the cape, where I would argue that if you didn't put some of the rendering in some of those wrinkles on the shoulder, it would be, it would be way more wide open, so it would be a lot more white, and then all of a sudden the city behind it would jump at you more. Because you go, fuck, look at all the detail behind the cape. Oh, my gosh. But what you don't want to do is have us have to sort of adjust our eyes and, and go, oh, there's the city. Oh, that's detailed wrinkles on the cape. Oh, that's detailed rendering on the rib cage, right? Each one of those just has to sort of what I call the three-second rule. you got to be able to see it in three seconds. So um, let me see one of the other pages, Jake. Yeah, is there one in particular you want? Um, no, go to the one. Go to one. Of the, well, go to the. There was there was another splash. I can talk about that real quick. This one maybe or no no no. There was one that was like a down shot. That one. Okay, so so you can come in a little bit tight on this, right? So Josh, I would say that I would say some of the exact same things on this one right here, right? Yeah. So you've got all this great city. But if you had just like see see some of the black, you get a little bit of black in the legs, like in the thigh, the bottom of the, the thighs, right? Instead yeah. of making those sort of small little pieces, I would I I would just make half of that black because why? Because then it's not going to interfere with what you're trying to do with the city and or with the uh, with the energy burst that's coming out of his hand or something like that, right? So if you if, I mean if you just think about it being color, although it's not, because all you're doing is black and white. But you go, okay, I'm going to put a color here. In this case, it's going to be black. Oh, I'm going to put a color here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be mostly white. I'm not going to over-render it. And then, then I'm going to do uh, a color in the middle. It's going to have a little bit of gray. And then you can go in between it, right? So um, it, on, on the left on, armpit, see how, like where the peck is? You got a little bit black there before it goes into the bicep, right? Yeah, it, like that. Like it separates now his his chest from his rib cage from his bicep, and even then, sort of his his muscles, his back muscles. Again, more of that allows you to basically define it. The, the but the problem is that you need to just. And again, it's lots of artwork, and I get it, and it's impressive, but then you, you got to go for clarity. So if you look at like what you're doing around the neck with the cape and all that other stuff, the, yeah. the, the wrinkles like up above his horn on the left kind of sort of look like the same wrinkles that are down below on his other side, right? So what you could have done is had maybe what's around his neck maybe have five wrinkles. I'm making it up. And then his cape would have 20. So at least it separates that his, what you're doing around the neck isn't exactly the same. Because if you make them the same and you start rendering it the same, then what ends up happening is you flatten your uh, drawings. And what you really want to do is you want to create three-dimensional. Three and the best way to create three-dimensional is to basically have a variety of, of work on there. Here's, here's uh, uh, for some of you that ink your own work and whatever else, here's sort of an easy little rule, a thing you can do, a test, that basically you can go over your own work. I call it, I call it the one-inch rule. So take an 8 by 10 piece of paper and literally cut out or tear out, it doesn't matter, like, like a hole or a circle or a box. It doesn't matter as long as it's about one inch, one inch big. And then... Slide that hole across your paper. And then ask yourself, can, can I tell what the difference is of all these textures? And even better, you know you're getting really good when you can actually get somebody else who's not an artist to tell you when your textures are shifting and that they look different, right? 
So here, here's here's sort of the 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 hard test for a, a, an artist slash inker. Draw a draw a woman, and she's leaning against a tree, and she has curly hair, and she's wear she's wearing a fur coat. She's holding a a poodle who has curly hair, and uh, standing uh, in front of her is a bunch of bushes. Now go, right? All of those have kind of curls and hair in it. Curly hair, curly poodle, curly, curly fur coat, and to some extent, bushes have, have curls in them. What you should be able to do is figure out a way over time so that each one of those four items, you, you draw an ink different. So that when you're sliding your one inch hole, you, it, it, you can go, oh, I'm going from one texture to another. Oh, I'm going to another texture. Oh, I'm going to another texture. Um, even if you can get that, right? Because I've seen stuff where uh, people draw and it, there, there's almost hardly a, a jump in the texture of skin and the way they render skin in the body and then the way they render the bazooka or the gun they're holding. And it's like, dude... One of them's made out of steel. The other one's made out of cloth. There, it has to look different. It has to look different. And and all you need to do is just sort of look with your eyes, and you see some things are shiny, some things are not shiny, some things have a little bit of a texture, some things wrinkle more than others, some things wrinkle not the whole thing, but they wrinkle like your shirt will wrinkle at the armpit. And, you know, your pants will wrinkle a lot more uh, behind your knees and uh, around your waist, wherever you're basically bending the most. That's where you're going to get the most wrinkles. But otherwise, it's open, right? So you don't have to worry about it. Where, again, if you look at these pants here, you can say that it's wrinkling around the kneecap, which it should, but it's also wrinkling in the thigh and in the hamstring and in the groin and in the kneecap on the other side. You, you, again, this is that. You gotta, you gotta just let this stuff breathe in little in, in spots on here um, that are on there. But um, and then let's go to one of your multi-panel pages here, uh, and then I'll move on to somebody else here. Okay. So the the uh, you've done some nice things here. So the one thing that you want to do here again is you're the director. Think of yourself as a director of a movie, right? You get to control the reader. So you've got one, two, three four, five, six, seven. Again, this is a pretty solid page. I would say, unless there's a good reason for it, I rarely go over six panels. And the only reason is because you start, it starts to force you to draw tiny things. And when you start drawing tiny things, then as you can see in panel one and in panel five, see those two figures, right? Yeah. They're, they're kind of about the same size, right? You know, right. you've, even, you've even got a couple on panel three. I mean, it's not the hero, but he's looking down at them. And they're, and they're kind of about, again, let, uh, I'm going to call it the one-inch rule again, right? The character looks like about one inch tall in panel one. There's a couple characters that look like they're about one inch in panel three. And then in panel six, it looks like, again, there's a couple that are, or the one character looks like about an inch. I mean, again, they're not exactly, but they're in the ballpark. And what you don't want is to have repetition of size and scale. So where you did do good, panel two, you've got three heads there, and each one of them is getting bigger, 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 right? right. I could argue that you could have overlapped the guy, the second uh, character could have been behind the, th the third character on the right, the big one, just a little yeah. bit, because what you did is you got polite that you, I mean, yes, it, the, the second guy's shoulder is hiding the guy behind him. But when, whenever you can sort of overlap things, whether it's a hand or a horn or a spike or a knife or a gun, and you can cut it in front of another character, uh, do it, right? Even on its on the own character, if the character is holding the gun, don't have them hold it to the side, hold it in front of them, but make it at an angle so that it crosses their body, then pokes out of their body so that you go, oh man, look at that cool big gun that they have there. Um, so, but, but I like the scale here. And then you went in close in panel four, like a, a, a cool eye shot. 
Mm-hmm. Those are those are always valuable. The only the only piece on here that I would say to watch out for too is remember that comic books have captions and have word balloons. Um, right. and, and I have to remind I have to remind my guys a lot. And um, and the reason is because I don't want you as a person that's hiring people. I don't want you spending twenty minutes, let's say, in panel two, up in the top left of panel two. I don't want you spending 20 minutes doing a beautiful city and then, you know, I give it to my inker and he spends 20 minutes and he knocks it out of the ballpark. And then I give it to my colorist and they do a nice job and they put a bunch of lighting effects on it, whatever. And then I put a fucking word balloon out. Right. I just, I, I wasted, I wasted your time, the colorist time and the inker's time. So as the penciler, you, you get to almost tell me the, the writer, like Todd, put the word balloon here because I'm going to sort of kind of leave this easy for you to see. I'm not saying it has to be empty, but if, if it's the place that you want me to put it and the building's going to be there, then make it a fairly simple building because I'm going to, I'm going to cover it anyways, right? Leave your elaborate buildings in places where you know that I'm not going to cover it up. So, you know, the, the question is in panel Panel five, where it looks like he's lifting his helmet up, right? Right. Yeah. Like so. So, this would be a difficult panel for me to put a word balloon in. The obvious place, not super obvious, but the only place is sort of like bottom right. The thing is, you didn't give me that much room, which is okay. But that means whatever he's saying, I got to keep it very terse and maybe make it four or five words long because I don't have any more room for him to say anything meaningful. If he does need to say anything meaningful or I need a bigger caption than that, unfortunately, I'm going to have to then start covering up something vital. I'm either going to have to go up above his head and I'm going to have to cut into his helmet. Don't want to do that. I'm going to have to cut into his hand. Don't want to do that. Uh, Or I have to cut into his neck. Don't want to do that. Right? I never... I never, Josh, want to cover up your artwork, right? So right. in panel two, in panel two, argu- arguably, arguably, you could have not drawn any background. It still would have worked. And the reason yeah. is because you've established background in panel one, you've got some background in panel three, and you've even got some background in panel six and seven. So once you establish certain things, you don't have to keep going back to them, right? You can, you, you can say, oh, the reader knows that he's on top of a building. You don't have to remind them they're on top of a building all the time or they're in a city looking down all the time. You can just go, I've established it, and now I can leave room for, for talking. So anyway, those are uh, – let me see that very first one too, Jake, real quick, and then we'll move on. Yeah, so this one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight panels, right? You, like, so here's what you can do. If you made this a five panel and you took three of those panels and moved them to the next page or whatever else, like you would, you would give yourself so much extra room to be able to obviously give the writer the spot where you want them to talk, right? Panel two, uh, Okay, I'm going to put it above his head. Although if there's anything he's looking up at, then I got to cover it up. I don't want to do it, but I can go above his head. But then if I go to panel three, which is a head, oh, by the way, the size of the head in panel two and the size of the head in panel three are kind of the same. Again, watch out for that. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Unlo- I mean, it could be a hell of a silent panel, but if something has to be said, I don't, I mean, I don't know. And maybe there's actually even a ninth panel. Maybe I've even missing that one that's off by his ear. But um, I'm just looking at the at the headshot, the headshot there, right? I don't know where I can put anything really on there, other than him saying maybe him saying no, or 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 something. I could put it maybe in the temple of his head. But again, I'm not a big fan of trying to put word balloons in people's heads. So. Um, so the drawing, so you got lots of nice drawing, Josh. Just just start looking at I mean, Craig Capullo to me is one of the great wonders 
of moving camera around on page to page so that he's got a great variety and he moves the camera and he's really smart about leaving space for captions and word balloons and he doesn't he doesn't kill himself drawing stuff that he knows is going to get covered up because he's he understands he's got deadlines and deadlines are going to matter if you want to get a body of work out so right anyways so all right but there's lots of good stuff there right just just a, a, a more clarity more clarity and 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 create a rolodex of textures so that when you're looking at something it doesn't seem like you're rendering three or four things kind of the same in black and white yeah i kind of did that on the on the spawn if we can just look at that for like a few seconds i just wanted to if that's okay the second one yeah if you could zoom in a little bit there's uh, different textures and stuff mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like you got some blacks on there. So again, if that that colored in black, um, yeah, that might that might work. I, again, depending on who the character is, I you know I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about making sure that you accentuate every single muscle right. on the body because because once you do that. If you if you get off just a little bit, it can start to look a little bit lumpy, right? Yeah. So, um, and depending on like who the inker is and whatever else, but um, again, this is where where black becomes your friend, right? And and Spawn's got a black costume, just like the Black Panther, right? When people yeah. have those kinds of costumes, take advantage of it sometimes. Just go, okay, cool, right? Um, but I would also say in this one real quickly, and then we'll move on. You've got all this rendering in the body and it's beautiful. Okay, cool. Um, again, watch out for the lumpiness, watch out for things like it looks like his thigh is, um, about as wide as his waist, which can't kind of be right. If I look at the thickness of his, of his waist above the skull on, a, on, on, on the belt. Uh, and then, and then the fattest part of his thigh, they're sort of both the same, and it can't be because your waist has to be thick enough so it can accommodate two legs, not one leg. Um, right. But uh, so this is a, a good um, version of you've got all the rendering in the body. So for so to me, for sure, back off on the rendering of the cape because now you'll have two different things. You'll have like all this cool anatomy and muscle, and then you'll have like the, these open spaces of the cape and these cool shapes, you know, start with, start with geometry and then, and then sort of work backwards. Right. Especially his cow, like look at his cow, his cow, like you, you don't need all those lines in the cow. Uh, you know, it, the cow would pop up way more if you had almost nothing and you're just using sort of the shape more than anything else. Right. I mean, I even right. tell that to my own artists that are in pros for 10 years. Guys, the cow is made out of starch, right? It's got a lot of starch in it. Somebody ironed it a little bit. And then the cape got some wrinkles, but mostly the wrinkles are around the shoulder. And then it flares out and it becomes big like bird wings or like a jet plane wings. I mean, it opens up. Um, stop stop wrinkling it. I, I, don't, I don't like it when people draw, even the pros, draw a spawn like he slept in his clothes, right? And then it's yeah. like his cape is all wrinkled. I, I mean, if you look at all the majority of what I did, I, I made these big giant shapes. So it just felt like he just had this massive amount of volume to him. But, um, but anyway, keep it up, Josh. This is this is good stuff, right? Um, you're Thank you're you. heading, you're headed in the right direction. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thanks, Josh, for coming up. Yeah, sh shout out. You got some s sweet work. And uh, you're always doing drawings for the cafe. Appreciate it. Yep. Jake, who do we have uh, next on deck? Uh, next will be uh, DJW. He said he wants to improve the quality of his inking, both traditionally and digitally. DJW. All right, DJW, I've shot you an invite. You mind, would not mind coming up on stage? And Jake will start sh sharing some of your work. Oh. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull them all up. Let's see. DJW.
Gotta accept that invite. He's trying. Oh boy. Are you having issues on mobile where you cannot come up? Is that still a thing? With the sharing screen? I, I, um, I mean, again, Josh didn't really talk a lot, right? So <laughs> that's true. Um, so uh, ask him if he's wanting to improve his inking because he wants to do inking over other people or if he wants to improve his inking on himself. Well, DJ, you heard the man. Type it out in chat. Do you want to improve the inking on others or on yourself? I, uh, if you're able to go on Discord on the computer, you can get up here. But I think Discord has a bug where... If someone is sharing their screen on stage and you're on mobile, you can't accept to come up on stage. I think that's a Discord problem. Should I uh, stop sharing my screen so we can hop up real quick? And then yeah, wait, maybe, that might work. Stop sharing your screen and then he can pop up. All right, now try. Boom. Perfect. Now share your screen again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Mini panic attack for a second. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Awesome. Hey, so, so DJ, so there, so my question, are you trying to, to improve on your inking so you can ink over others or are you trying to improve inking so you can improve your inking over yourself? Uh, I'm mostly just thinking like for myself, but of course, long term, I'd love to be able to do that for other people, obviously. But uh, I'm just trying to figure out just different techniques because like I've gone through different uh, phases of inking. You know, I, at one point I was trying to do more of like the Jim Lee, tons of line inking approach and that that wasn't necessarily working with my own personal style. It just wasn't flowing for me. So I've tried to more simplify it, um, get it to where it's more anatomy focused and kind of like you were talking before about having more solid black areas to create a good contrast and create good shadow. And, and like you were saying, allowing the eye to rest in some spaces. So yeah. that I guess more so for me to answer your question. Okay. So, so uh, Jake, then zoom in on the chest area for a bit. Okay. And so, so uh, DJ, here, so here's what I'd say here. So, you, so yours, your, you come at it uh, from a sort of a different mindset uh, of Josh. Josh was doing some pretty heavy rendering on a lot of places and trying to get all the muscles on the in the right spot. Um, did you, did you color this? I did. Yes. Okay. So it looks like what you're doing, if I was to see this in black and white, it might look a little simple, but not, but then when you come in with your coloring, you're actually adding shape with color, right? Especially like I can see it like in the, in the, uh, abs on him on a six pack, a little bit like where the, the, uh, sort of love handles would be on him. And then even uh, in the uh, rib cage uh, a little bit, right? So you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're not having to sort of get it all in the, in the ink. And that's okay because I'm saying don't let a colorist have to basically save you. But if you're doing your own coloring for yourself, then the rule gets broken somewhat because you, you know how you're coloring. So you, can, you, you know you're going to add the right elements to your own drawing. So right. So here's what I, so so let's just talk about your drawing uh, at, at first glance. The anatomy is there, right? But what what I see is now that you and and lots of people do. I used to do this for years too. I, I is and and it usually comes with confidence. Is that you're you're kind of chiseling the body, right? Mm -hmm. Almost almost like it's almost like it's a, a big piece of soap or wood. And then you're going, oh, okay, chisel. Okay, there's a line. And, and so what I mean by chiseling is that everything then becomes kind of perfect, right? And so, yeah. so you're, when I looked at it, that your anatomy is in the right spot. And now what you have to, I think, sort of figure out a little bit is how to loosen up and how to change your lines slightly, both penciling and inking, so that it doesn't come off so perfect, right? Like, right. so, I mean, if you look at like a lot of 
uh, action figure toys, older toys. Um, this is sort of how they sculpt superheroes. They go, oh, six pack, all in a row, a line down the middle. I mean, literally a six pack, right? The, the, mm. the, the, the size of each one of them height wise is about the same, right? Du, 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 du. And then, okay, I've got going into the rib cage, um, you know, the, uh, the line up above there. If you kind of look at like a swimmer's body or a gymnastics body, or even, I, I, I hesitate a little bit saying a, 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 a bodybuilder, you got to get one of the ones that aren't like over the top. But even if you right. do that, you're going to see that like there's, all, all the muscles are there. They have a six pack, but sometimes the six pack kind of is only three lines. It doesn't really sort of have the line down the middle, right? Mm. I mean, a little bit. I mean, you do three lines going across and then you do a little bit, but it indicates that it's a six pack. And so right. you go, oh, okay. And it feels more sort of natural, right? Um, that the muscles are then relaxing and and sort of flowing into the rest of the body. When you chisel stuff, what it looks like is, to my eye, it looks like um, that the body is flexing and tight, like we used to do when the pretty girl used to walk by, right? You just sort of like <laughs> in your gut and you tighten everything up and you want to look really good, right? And so, yeah. which is different than when you look at some of the pros that do a really nice job where the body just feels really like almost one piece instead of like, oh, there's the shoulder. It's glued to the arm. Oh, the arm's glued to the forearm because everything is now sort of constructed and then jammed into the next piece instead of it kind of all flowing together, right? And our yeah. muscles, I mean, again, if you look at arm, the shoulder goes into and, in in, you know, kind of is the separator between the bicep and the tricep on, on the profile. And then that muscle actually keeps going and makes that big bump that's on your outside of your forearm. So we have long muscles in our bodies, right? I could show you lines that go from the wrist literally all the way up to the shoulder. Once you sort of find those long lines, then you're not going to be thinking of it as, oh, I got to draw a shoulder, I got to draw a bicep, I got to draw a forearm you're going to be sort of thinking of it as sort of one long piece in which you basically then cut some lines in to basically give the separation and the detail uh, and the definition of it. Right. I mean, if you look at again, yeah. Jake, if you go, if you go up on the, onto his uh, leg, you, you did the same thing here. You got three teardrops. And again, the answer is yes. That's exactly sort of when you look at anatomy, it, it is built in these teardrops. But now what you need to do is to go, how do I soften this just a little bit so that it doesn't look like three teardrops or four teardrops and you're getting a repeating pattern in the leg, right? And yeah. it, feels, it feels then just a little bit more natural, right? So you've got sort of three big ones. I could argue maybe even the fourth one if you want to go sort of into the into the inner groin that are there you uh but especially the three that are in front there and then you kind of got a little teardrop for the kneecap um what would have helped that is if you didn't uh separate all of them with the dark blue right yeah if, if, only, a, if only a little bit if you would run the let's say the the, the big one uh, running down the left side of the pay of the of his leg there, um, and you didn't worry about the blue sort of on on half of his leg on the left side, and then you just added a little bit of detail on the inside. Okay, cool, right? That 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 would make it a little softer uh, that's in there. But um, anyway, it's it's cool. Uh, what else you got, Jake? Give me another image. Do you want me to do another quick scroll through? No, I don't care. Just pick one. Yeah. So let's just keep it at the side because then, uh, DJ, I, uh, I 
hopefully you, and you will see a couple of things that I see. So yeah, uh, let's just talk about coloring real quick, right? Um, mm. So we've got. I, I understand there's a fade there, so you're going from purple to yellow, um, and it's actually not bad. I, the only two things I'd say about fades and colors: try to be aware. I have a couple of things. One, you've got it dead center, right? So the fade from yellow to purple is kind of makes its transition right in the center of the page, right? Yeah. If I go if I go left and right, and and if you make it in the center like that, then there's a tendency for the eyes to think about top and bottom, right? And you don't want to do that. Right. You should have made it like 80-20 instead of 50-50, right? The the fade coming down there. Um, or maybe I could have had it to where it's separating Batman and Spawn. Would that have been a good idea? Or yeah, like you could have the purple could have gone down to about right underneath your signature, like your your red one. Okay, it could have come, it could have come down a little bit more because you still then would have had Batman's leg poking out of it, right? But yeah. but then if we look at some other color, look at look at the inside of Batman's cape, the one where you got a little bit of blue off to the left, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're doing a little bit of airbrushing there, a little bit of fading, a little bit of softening, which is okay. But then when I look at his rib cage and what you're doing with his shoulder and the definition of some of his muscles, you're, you're kind of using the same technique, right? And this is going yeah. back to what I said about Josh. One is a body and the other one is cloth, right? Don't, yeah. don't, don't allow those to reflect light the exact same. Because if you come up with a different way of treating the cape, then the body is going to pop out a lot more. I would say that you did a better job of that on Spawn. His cape doesn't look like it's competing with any of his body, right? So, yeah. Um, but I, that, that little area of uh, blue highlight on the cape there, I think is competing a little bit with the body, not only in terms of the technique, but I would even argue in some of the tonality of it. You've got like a little bit of a white highlight on the cape, right? Mm-hmm. And then you've got some little white highlights on his body and on, on Batman's body and Batman's knee. So now, again, you're, you're treating it sort of bumpy, right? Okay, fine. Uh, I, I'd, I'd play with the colors to just go, now uh, the cape isn't going to quite reflect the same way that uh, his leg muscles are going to reflect. So Yeah. Um, uh, going back to what I said earlier about like uh, over emphasizing and and sort of separating all the muscles and whatever else. Take a look at um, uh, Spawn's two legs, right? Yeah. To me, to me, they're they're kind of competing, and the reason they're competing because like at first blink, at first blink, there's a bit of a repetition. Now, you could say, well, Todd, what do you mean a repetition? Our fucking legs look the same, right? I mean, the anatomy is the same. It's just, it's flipped on it. I understand that, which means, you, which is why you've got to be even more aware of it, right? Yeah. And so, so given that the anatomy is the same on both sides, of both our arms, our chest, our, our, our legs, I mean, there is some symmetry. This is where the posing of the body allows you to get away from that. So, what you've what you've got on spawn, you've got him in a pose in which I get the full length of both his thighs, right? There's plenty of poses where, like, even if one knee was coming more towards camera, then it would change the way you have to then draw the perspective and or the anatomy on that one knee, um, and you're not getting sort of all of, all from the groin to the knee of both of them. I, I could say you did the exact same thing on Batman. Okay. You, I've, got, I've, got full, I've got full thigh, full thigh on both sides, right? So now, which is okay, I guess, on one if you want to push it. But now because both characters are doing that, I've got four full thighs with two characters. And there's where yeah. the, the repetition comes in a little bit. It's one of those ones that... Once sometimes once somebody points it out, then you then you see it because I, again I did it plenty of times where I get blind to my own drawing, and then somebody says why did you do that and then you you go oh I, I didn't even see that um, yeah cool uh, here's here's what you're doing really good on this composition though 
the, the page is square. And what you're doing really nicely is that you're making sure that almost everything, it's, you can't have everything, but you know, you've got a lot of things that are at angles that are counter to the edges of the page. So Batman's leg is at a di diagonal. Uh, uh, Spawn's cape uh, is at a diagonal. Um, even the swoop of Batman's cape that's all black is sort of rounded and curving, so it's sort of different. You'd be surprised how many times, if you look at comic books, people are doing lines that are parallel to either mm -hmm. the top, the top of the panel and bottom of the panel, or parallel to the side. And you're like, ugh, like never draw a building straight up and down, always tilt it just a little bit so that it doesn't basically line up with the frame. You can't, I mean, think about it as a movie, right? When you go to a yeah. movie theater, that frame is going to never move on you. That frame is always going to be in its 16, uh, you know, to nine, 16 to nine ratio. It's always going to be exactly the same. What can change is the camera angle and how you crop things and whatever else. To give the sense of depth, even though your panel is going to be exactly the same, you're you're you get the luxury of changing the size of your panel in comic books. But you know, I I, I would still think of it as being a movie director and saying, okay, yeah. even even if this is my panel and this is my square, how do I compose stuff in it so that it seems interesting and everything isn't up and down, right? So you have. And, and what's interesting, if you actually look at movies, they direct movies differently. Take a look at a comedy, especially an older comedy. And for the most part, the directors a lot of times will have the camera back and will show everything. Where if you're watching like a drama, a drama pushes the camera in and is always cropping heads. They call it a Hollywood haircut. They're always clipping the top of people's heads as they're talking back and forth to each other. And they, they sort of blur stuff. And they don't sort of let you see everything. Some comedies, to me, almost look like Broadway plays. Uh, they just happen to be filming them, uh, and they're a little more they're a little more simplistic to my eye. But um, anyway, your your the, the the composition is good. Um, I would just I would just be aware of a couple of those things. Even Batman's cape, right? Even Batman's yeah. cape. Come down with the point let's say the one that's on the furthest on the left, and then I would have swooped it up so that it came up so that it had to go back up and around that thigh that's bending. Right now, you've mm -hmm. got it politely just a little bit underneath it, right? I'd make it go back up so that it gets hidden, and then it has to come back behind it. Why? Because it creates depth, because then it's like, oh, the cape is behind his leg. Cool. Also, all three of your swoops, on the cape, kind of the same, right? Like, yeah, it's okay. Have a little bit of fun, right? Have a have, have a little <laughs> bit of fun. I I found that there. I mean, I I've employed people whose rough sketches and rough drawings to me have way 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 more energy than when they actually go and ink themselves because then they tighten the pencils and they start chiseling it. And then they ink it and they chisel it a second time. And all of a sudden, what looked like a body in motion now looks like somebody posing in motion. And there's a difference mm. between the two. The difference between the two is when you got something in motion, that means it's almost like you took a, you took a movie and then you just froze it on a frame, right? You froze yeah. it. Which is different than saying, oh, pose like you're, you're slugging somebody, which is different than actually slugging somebody and grabbing one of those frames, right? So right. I used to do a lot of the posing for my sports figure. For the, for, and, 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 I, and again, at some point, obviously my body can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm best for rock and roller. But even on the <laughs> rock and rollers, when I used to have it, I used to do, I used to have the music on and then like the game where, you know, when the music shuts off and you go try to find a chair, right? Musical chair, right? Yeah. I used to get it and, it, and then I'd like, I'd, I'd do the dancing, I'd do the action and then bam, right? Like whatever I was doing right in the middle of it, dun, 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 and then I'd freeze. And what happens is 
your body is contorted in certain ways, but it's it's realistic. And if I was to say, oh, Todd, just stand there and go into that pose, it wouldn't come off nearly as convincing, right? I even, yeah. I even did it one time with an Elvis impersonator. He couldn't get the posing right, but he had a boom box. And I said, then we got to stop this. You, you, you go up on stage and sing, don't you? Yeah, okay, I want you to sing. And the moment I hit the fucking music off, wherever you're at, I need you to freeze that, literally ice freeze it, right? And I got the best poses out of him then because his wrist was turning and his fingers were flailing and his body was twisting and he was sort of, his core of his muscles were tightening or his leg, like he doesn't know, he couldn't do that even if he wanted to from a standing position. You have to be in it. And so if I want to do a quarterback pose, I, I literally would pretend that I was behind the center, get the ball, hike, because I used to play quarterback in high school, go back, yeah. pump fake twice, and then go, fuck, there's my guy. Woo! And then I'd freeze. And then I'd freeze because I was in the middle of the act of doing it. Um, so for you, you want to do the exact same thing. you got a lot of nice motion here. And you want to keep all that action so that, again, everything isn't sort of parallel and straight up and down. So Yeah. So, all right. Uh, good stuff. Now, let's just talk about inking real quick, and then I'll let you get. Um, inking is a sort of unscientific science in and of itself. So yeah. there's, there's, lots of, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of ways to ink. I'd go back to what I said to Josh. The, the biggest thing about inking is that I should be able to look at your, your capes and your trees and your bodies and your cars and your machinery and your explosions and, and an elephant and, and, and quickly see that you've done something slightly different with each one of them, right? You yeah. can't, you can't, I've, I've, I, and sadly, there are these guys that have been in our business, especially when I first broke in, and like they'd feather everything. They'd fucking feather everything. And so it just became repetition. Oh, by the way, you also have to pay attention to the quality and the thickness of your line, right? Right. So if you're doing thick lines on the character, if you're going to do a city behind, then you can use thinner lines and, and dead weights on it, right? I mean, I figured this trick out on Sp Spider-Man's body. I literally would go in there and, and ink him without any of the weapons. I would just go, no, thick, 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 thick. And then I would come in with this fair line and do all the webbing. But I made it so thin that you could still see the body muscle on a uh, structure on him where other people would literally ink the webbing on Spider-Man's costume kind of about the same thickness as they were doing the muscle stuff. And to me, it all blended. It, it all bl it flattened. It looked more like a, what I would call a coloring book. So, but. Yeah, and that's actually the exact same advice that another artist named Michael Watkins, I don't know if you ever met him, he gave me the exact same advice about inking, is really mm -hmm. being mindful of the line thickness and making sure that you create depth by u u utilizing the differences and so that's that's awesome that that fact that I got that advice not just from you but from someone else as well it just reinforces that. Yeah. And and again, figure out that you know everything doesn't have to be the same feather, the same tape, or whatever else. You can have some stuff long, small. Some stuff you go into in a corner. You're going to cross hatch a little bit. You just create a repertoire, right? I mean, all of a sudden, when you're early, you got five different ways to do stuff, and once you've been doing it for a while, you got 105 ways to do stuff. So yeah. All right. I appreciate you coming up. Yeah, I appreciate having me. I really appreciate the advice and uh, just know I'll be taking all of that and uh, putting everything I have to make sure that I can improve. So I very much appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, DJ, for coming up. Sweet art, man. Absolutely. I love looking at these portfolios. Jake, who's up? Who's up on deck? Uh, next up will be Joseph Vargas or Joseph. Joseph Vargas. Vargas. I think you have to not share then to get him up, Jake. Uh, that's only if he's on mobile. Joseph Vargas. Could you raise your hand, Joseph? I'm having trouble finding you in this audience. Uh, Jay Vargas is his, uh... Boom. He's on mobile. Is that mobile? Yeah, quit sharing your screen for a sec. All right, Joseph, come on up.
you should be able to just click the accept at the top of your screen. There he is. There he is. All right. Go ahead, Jake. Um, Joseph, you're muted too. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Cool. Um, thanks for taking uh, some time to read my portfolio. Appreciate your time. Sure. Okay. So, Jake, let's uh, zoom in on this one. Uh, which part? Just any, any and all of it. I just need to see it real quick. Let me see. Let me see some of the other pages. Double up. So zoom, zoom in on this. Yeah. Next or keep going? Next. Yeah. Which one do you want to take a look at? Um, go to the second or third one. Uh, the one with that, that one right there. Yeah, let's start there. Okay. So, uh, Joseph, it looked like uh, the first one I saw uh, was you um, penciling, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So, um, so just off the top of my head here, real quick, um, I see a, I see a better proficiency in the penciling than I do the inking, and the, uh, what that means to a guy like me is when you're showing your artwork to people, make sure that you always show the pencils and the inks, because somebody okay. might if somebody might not think you're a professional inker, but they might think you're a professional penciler or vice versa. So if you, if you say, here's my pencils and then here's me inking my pencils, you're basically applying for two different jobs and it gives you twice as much chance to basically get the job if you're applying twice, right? So yes. um, the, pre, the, pre, the previous artist, TJ, I could argue that he should be doing pencils, copy, inks, copy, colors, copy, because he can apply for three jobs. Because somebody might say, you can't draw, you can't ink, but man, I like your colors. You want to color something, right? And at some point, your goal is to just get into the business, right? Don't worry about whether your feelings are hurt. Just get into the business and you can worry about it later. So, but go down to the bottom panel, Jake, on this one. So one of the things, one of the things that I saw in a couple of your pages, um, and you're doing it again here, is what I call the, the straight on camera shot, right? And the straight on camera shot, I would argue is one of the least interesting angles you can, you can use. So, and the reason for that, Joseph, is because once you do the straight on camera shot, then everything becomes symmetrical, right? So his head, his yeah. head because it's straight on, is going to be essentially, if I cut it, his head in half from uh, top to bottom and I flipped it, it's sort of going to be about the same. That's, that's symmetry, right? And what you want to do is just slightly turn almost everything so that it's not coming right at you and it doesn't feel sort of, sort of flat, right? So his head, so here's what's happening here on this one here. His head's coming straight at me which creates the symmetry and a little bit of flatness to me. And then because he's coming straight at me, then his head is, is in the center of his body. And again, I understand that our head is in the center of our body. What we're trying to do though, as we're drawing is to, is to get away from the obvious. 
So his head now is in the center of his body. There's about as much of his chest on the left side as there is on the right side. So again, you create sort of symmetry that's there. The shoulder height, kind of about the same and about the same size. So again, I'm getting, I'm getting repetition there. And then the, the leg is uh, the big long one, the left one is coming at me and it's coming straight at me and it's, it's coming at me so perfect that of course it's gonna hide the shin and the foot and the heel and everything behind it. Same with the other one on the other side. Oh, and by the way, it also makes it that the width of both those legs are about the same. Now, I know intellectually that our legs are the same width, just like our arms are the same width, right? So there is the symmetry, but to go back to what I've been saying earlier, then your job is to try and have as much fun and, 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 and get away from the symmetry if you can, right? So the hand, uh, that would be his right hand. See the right hand that you got? Um, with his, he, he, he's got the claw and it looks like it's coming towards me, right? That's one of those ones that, yeah. again, with a lot of characters, but especially if I was doing Spider-Man, that hand would have been way out front, so it would have been four times bigger, five times bigger than his other hand, and it would have been probably way bigger than his face. Why? Because his hand's in front of his face. So it, it just naturally, if you take a photo of somebody and they're reaching out towards camera, the hand's going to be like way, way big. Oh, by the way, uh, the hand could have then been cutting in front of the mouth and in front of the, uh, the teeth or something like that. So it would have hidden, it would have hid some of the symmetry that was, uh, uh, that was on there. But if you took the head and turned it just slightly to the left or slightly to the right, then what happens is you break all, you break all that symmetry that's in the face and the flatness of the face, and it forces you then to make the head go off center, right? So if you look at it like a lot of what I did on um, Spider-Man, I intentionally had him hunched over and he would, he was always, his head was always like to one side or the other because then I had to make his body and his neck, like I can't even see the neck here because the neck is directly behind the head and you've perfectly centered him so I can't even get any neck in there, just like I can't get any of the foot. So if you just slightly turn it, then you can put the head and then the neck goes behind the head and then the shoulders and the neck muscles go behind the neck and then you get to, and everything starts to sort of taper behind it and you start creating a lot more depth uh, by moving the character and turning the character around. Uh, it also looks like, Jake, if you go up to panel one, I don't know if it's rain or if it's sweat or whatever, so just zoom in a bit on the face where he's, where he's driving. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what, whatever it is that you've got on him. It could be gunk or blood or whatever. I don't, I don't know what it is. Right. But whatever it is, again, it's very polite. Right. And polite means that they're all kind of about the same size and they're all spaced about the same distance apart. So there's, you know, there's no obvious like clutter of a bunch of them, or there's not like one big blob on, on one side and then, and then the splatters go on to the other side, right? And so what you want to do, just like the body, you want to have the body not be symmetrical. You also don't want to have any of these sort of textures. It looks like you, got a, you did a big one of them on his chest. See that big one on his chest? Um, right underneath his neck, right? There. You need more, you, again, you, you could randomize it a lot more, but if you look at like what you've got on his forearms and you look at like what you've got on his shoulders and you look at like what you've got on his face, they're, they're all sort of kind of the same. Now, again, if they're ants, then it makes sense because ants are all about the same size, but it doesn't look like to me when I go to the close up of the next panel that that's what they're supposed to be. Oh, by the way, the same thing with, with the hair. If this guy has been in a fight or he's in a, in a, in a mess, then 
the shine that you've got on his hair on the left and the right are kind of about the same, right? I don't know. If he's got messy hair, and he should because he just got in a fight or something, then there should be a randomness to the highlights on him, and his hair should have a little more randomness. A couple strands should be coming down in front of your eyes and stuff like that. You did a lot better job in the next panel. See, see his hair? See how, see how it's going in a bunch of different directions? I still probably would have taken a couple of them and made a couple of them a little bit longer just so it just felt like a little bit of a wild man. But um, And in the panel where he's driving, once you start putting stuff towards camera, don't be afraid to sort of overdo the, the, the scale of it. So if I, if I, if I put my fist closer towards camera my fist should get like bigger and and i understand that really when you're driving your arms aren't that much in, in front of you but they shouldn't feel like the same size they would be if they were at my side like those hands are about the size of what they should be if they were at the side of his body but they're now forward right so it's okay i would argue if you had made those fists literally twice as big because it would it would have created a sort of a forced a forced perspective, and then and then you could have made the steering wheel a lot a lot thicker too, so the st steering wheel doesn't sort of get lost uh, with some of the lines. See the line that you have in the back seat that's holding the window, the back window, the one that's right yeah. below that window, and and then the front seat. See that black. Mm -hmm. So. So the steering wheel is kind of that si same size. I'd argue it's actually skinnier, right? And and the stuff that you have closest to camera, you never want it to take a, you know, literally be second-class citizen to anything that's in the background. So what you want to keep creating is foreground, and then to me the foreground here is the steering wheel and the hands. Midground, midground is the character themselves. And then the background is then the seats and especially the back the back seat. And it starts getting pushed. And you want you you want the scale of all three of those to indicate that you're going back uh, in those. So um, you got another one there, Jake? Uh, we got four others. Which one would you like? Yep. Grab one. Here's one here. I think you'll I think you'll see it. Uh, you know, so see how you got the head again centered, dead center? Yeah. Right. You did a better. You did a nice, nice job with the hand. One hand is in in front. You even got the sword is cutting in front of the chin a little bit. That's cool. Uh, and then you've got the other arm is in the back. So, you, so though you did that, you did a nice job there. But again, you then put both of the legs directly underneath his head. Again, the head is in the center, so there's about the same amount of chest. And I'd even argue that even the cape is now falling behind him you know up and over the shoulder kind of about the same and then it's falling down below him again about the same right it's okay if you swoop the cape to one side right that it because it'll feel like he he's coming around an angle or something like that and then and then in the background you uh whatever the trees are whatever the the things are in the background they're kind of all about the same height, and uh, and and there's not there's not nearly as big a randomness, right? There's no point where the yellow breaks into the red of the cape, and if and if those were a little more random, where some were a little bit taller and some were a little bit skinnier or whatever, out you could have you could have had a separation between them, so some of the yellow literally came down and touched the the red of the cape. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's there. So, uh, what, else, what else you got, Jake? Yeah, zoom in on this one. Let me see it. Yeah. So this is one of those ones. This is one of those ones, and this is always a very, very, very difficult uh, composition to do. Um, of when you got the guy or gal at the top of a pile of other people, what what you want to do here? Remember, I was saying with uh, Josh about letting the eye breathe a little bit, right? 
So, so if you pull this back, if you pull this back, Jake, now go, go make this small. There should be something there that indicates that the two main characters, which I assume is the female and the male at the top, are, are more important than everybody else. And so even if it's just everybody else has a ton of detail and you, and you simplify them just a little bit, just a little bit, um, and whatever black is behind them, you could argue that uh, you could have got rid of some of the black, put it down lower in the pile, and left it so that those two characters were the only two popping out of the pile. Because right now they're, they're sort of covered by the black behind them, but so are the bad guys. Um, there's, a w there's a way to poke out your characters to go, oh, they're the only two that are poking out of the pile in such a super obvious way that you have to look at those two. So I would have going 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 a little bit closer, Jake, on the on the two main characters. Keep going. Yeah, so I would have got rid of some of the black behind them, and then see the guy that's over the bad guy that's over on the right. I would have lowered him so that he was even lower than the female's head, so that again, if you don't, if if the background is let's say mostly white. And the two characters, your two heroes, are the two that are popping out of the dark pile. Then, then the bad guy is still lower than your two heroes, and you're not basically making them parallel, right? Like if I take a line parallel to the bottom of the screen from the female over to the bad guy, they're kind of at the same height, and it gives them basically equality. Don't, don't, don't let the bad guys have the same value unless you're, they're fucking being cut in half. Or they're being gutted, or you got to sort through them, or so, I mean, make it, make it obvious. But it's way cooler if you're just on top of the pile and everybody else is just falling down uh, at the bottom of the pile, and the two heroes are sort of triumphant in all of it. So, um, you got one more? Yeah. So a lot of nice drawing here. I like the pencils. I like everything here. Um, you got some nice rendering. Again, the, uh, if you look at the cityscape, I'd, I'd vary it. It's sort of kind of all the buildings are about the same height. I'd vary it a lot more, right? Just, I mean, literally look look at a, any kind of downtown. There's a there's a, a big, big, big degree of the scale of buildings from one block to another. Uh, I think you will now see, Joseph, there, your lead character, although it's rendered really nicely. Um, see how you got him? You got him dead center towards the camera again. Yeah. Right. Now, what I was talking about before, interestingly, your other three characters behind. You did. You did. You did what I was saying. Just slightly turn the character's head a little bit. I would argue the character that you did in the bottom left is sort of more interesting to look at because you got mm. his head turned. You've got now the neck. The shoulder, you got way more shoulder on one side than you do on the other side, just by the mere presence that you've tilted his body uh, a little bit. So I think you get a lot more dynamic in doing that with the body. Um, but uh, there, like I said, there's a, there's a lot to like on this page. So, um, so far, everybody that's come up uh, is, is on the right path. So I'm not, I'm not seeing anything. So anyways, keep it up, Joseph. You got, you got a lot of, I mean, again, I'm, I'm picking on you a little bit, uh, uh, but again, I'm just trying to state stuff for everybody else. But you've got a lot, you've got a lot of very, very, very good stuff going on here. So keep going. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. All right, Joseph, man. Appreciate you coming up. Awesome art, as always. Jake, who's on deck? Uh, it'll be uh, Nemo. He said he wants to become a cover artist. Uh, any advice related to that or how to get recognized? I'm also going to stop streaming to clean up a little bit of the photos I have opened up. Go ahead, Nemo. I shot you that invite, so try to hop up on stage whenever you can. We have one more artist after this, correct? Uh, yeah, yep. one more. All right, perfect. Welcome, Nemo. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I can. So Nemo, I'll give you the easiest words of advice. You want to be a good co cover artist, just draw cool shit, right? So, 
Uh, it's like, so now the question is, what's the cool shit? So, I don't know. There, there are lots of artists are, there's a lot of styles out there that uh, people are, are gravitating towards. So it doesn't have to be any one style. So if you can find your own style, then cool. Mm-mm-mm. So if I'm remembering right, Nemo, you said you wanted us to take a look at the spawn artworks you had, right? Yeah, especially the spawn artworks, yes. So you yeah. have the first one dead, and then second one. Okay. Yeah. And the third one. Okay. Cool. Okay, these are all, these. these are... These are good. These would be good to talk about. Okay, so go to the first one. Okay, so the first one is, again, good composition. You got a, you know, gunslinger looking badass. Um, uh, and he's, he's uh, got his gun up there. Cool. Um, I think what this, what takes away from this, uh, Nemo, is that you've got, you've got, sort of the darkness in the shadows underneath his hand and in the bottom right you've got the darkness underneath his hat and on his around his eyes you've got the darkness a little bit in his chest and then you've got darkness in the hat and then you've got darkness behind him and that becomes very difficult to separate um and create your depth of feel right so kind of the easy trick here would be whatever layer, like if you're doing this digitally, whatever you're doing on the back layer, you just pull that back and, and change that color so it's just not quite so much black. So it doesn't match the black up front, right? So that there's just a little bit of change, a little bit of change in color. I don't know if yeah. you've ever been, I don't know if you've ever been on top of a, mountain or you've been in a place where you can see a range of mountains but I, as they get further away do you, you you notice that the color changes on them so that you can actually sort of see the depth of them they get sort of a little bit bluer or whatever color the sky is but there's there's oh that range looks one color the range that's 20 miles away looks another color and the range that's 40 miles away looks another color right yeah, even though yeah. they're all made out of the same essentially the same dirt and the same trees and the same shrubbery. It's just as you get further away, then all of a sudden color gets a little bit distorted. What it also allows you to do is to separate those three mountains um, where if they were all the exact same color, you wouldn't be able to sort of look at them and go, which one, which one's closer um, other than maybe scale. So I think that there's uh, a range here that you could have pushed back the the color in the background just uh, just a little bit right now again we're going to talk about another one where you didn't do that where i actually think it works um but but in this case i think it doesn't quite work because i'm losing i'm losing what i'm supposed to be looking at right um and 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 then this is we're going back to the other one we're talking about colors and textures and whatever else you know he's got a gun uh and the gun you've colored kind of gray uh, and it looks a little metallic in some places, but again, I wouldn't worry about eating it a little bit. I know that the lead back then was a little dull, but you, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be so loyal that it doesn't look cool because what ends up happening, if you look at the barrel of that gun or you look at uh, like where the bullets were going in or something like that, um, that color is now, getting to be too close to like the hand that's holding the gun and the color of uh, gunslinger's mask. Right. And so again, you're not, you're not separating those two because the, the color quality, at least on my computer seems to be a lot the same. Um, although I guess I should turn up my screen as bright as I can. Um, the problem too with having stuff that looks really good on a computer is that if you ever print it, it gets darker, right? So I always tell my I always tell my colorists guys if it looks good on your screen, make it even brighter because it's going to get duller, right? So um, you can push it. This is the other thing I was also talking about where if you got a chance 
cut stuff in front. He's holding the gun, and the gun is in front of his face, but you've just got just a little bit too polite uh, by making it miss his hat, so it's not cutting in front of his hat, like the brim of his hat, and, and his cowl. See how his cowl is going up? It's not cutting in front of the cowl, right? So if you had tilted that gun a little bit more, let's say right now it's at 11 o'clock, right, if it was a clock. If you put it at 10 o'clock, and then, and then you took the cowl, which is up and down at noon, and you put the cowl then at one o'clock or even at two o'clock, you would get this X pattern, right? A little bit of an X. Um, but what, would, it, what it would be doing is it would create more angles and it would be cutting stuff in front of each other. And then again, this is where you get your foreground, midground, and background, right? So your gun... It's cutting his shoulder, so again, you got a little bit of depth there, but you could have gotten a lot more depth, again, if you just sort of tilted it uh, so that it cut in front of that cowl and, the, and then you move the cowl over. So, but, okay, let me, let me see the next one. So this one is a little bit of what we were talking about on the other one. Even though you do actually in the top left have the same black as you do in the bottom right, right? So your foreground black and your background black technically are the same as you go to the deepest part of both of them. Because you added that green behind spawn, I'm not losing the figure, right? The, 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 figure, the figure on this one relative to that gunslinger pops, right? Like, I mean, there's no, I could show that this is the three second rule. You should be able to see anything in three seconds. I could take this, you know, hide it, turn to my mom, say, okay, one, two, three, what did you see? She would, she would have to say, it looks like some kind of person dressed in some kind of red costume or something. She would, like, she would get it, right? Oh, and by the way, there's a green background. Cool. So you're not, on this one right here, whatever needs to be seen, which is the cowl um, and the head and never, um, it, 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 like, uh, this this pops. You cut the cowl on his left ear, the the cowl piece that's over on the right side, in a nice yes. spot because you didn't put it at the top of the head. A lot of people like to put it at the top of the head so it creates a tangent to the top of the head. You moved it down so I can still see the curve of the top of his head. Oh, and by the way, I can see the curve of the top of his head because you put a nice green background behind it, right? Cool. Yeah. Again... The green is, 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 you know, pretty close to the color of his eyes. So we lose his eyes. So those eyes don't get quite as piercing, but that's okay. Because maybe your effect here is that, you know, he's, he's sort of lathering up some of his necro energy and he's about ready to unspool it. So, uh, so that's okay. Um, I would say, again, it's a minor pick. That his head is a little bit is a little bit low, right? Watch watch for watch for watch for chins getting to the sort of the collarbone and lower. Um, and because once you get there, it sometimes it almost can look like they're shrugging their shoulders or they're shirking a little bit. It's not it's not powerful. It's what people do when they're shy a little bit. You know they they sort of cower down a little bit, right? Yeah. So if I, if I was on Photoshop, I could cut out that head and go click, 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 probably move it up about yeah. three, or four, three or four clicks and maybe even move it a click or two to the left. And I think once you, if you know, you click it on and off, you'd go, oh yeah, there it is there. I, I, I do it to a lot of my heads. I just, I draw it and then later on I go, man, that head's not in the right spot. And then I have to Photoshop it and move it up left to right just a little bit and go there. That's where the, hair, the head should have been. So when we when we were doing it with pencil and ink, we had to get it first time every time. You don't have to be quite so perfect if you're sort of even even if you're painting this and not digital, you you can then scan it, put it into Photoshop, and then go in and tweak it and 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 fix fix some of your uh, uh, things that are on there. So, um, the some of the stuff you're doing in the mask. Again, I think you could probably get a little more gnarly, right? If you look at like H.R. Giger, he's a guy that does 
crazy artwork and the guy that created the alien for the alien movie. Um, you could probably come in there and just get a little bit gnarlier. And the only reason I say that is that then you'd get a better separation of some of the red wrinkles that you've got in the cape. Remember I was talking about trying to create different textures. So if you just tighten that up a little bit, you'd have, you'd have some nice stuff there, but there's, there's lots of good here. Uh, I think if that's his thigh, his thigh is probably, if you put your thumb over that, I think you'll see that you didn't need that thigh up there. If it's part of his cape, then that's a different thing. But if it's his yeah. thigh, then I think if you put your finger over that right now on your computer screen, you go, no, I didn't, I like, he seems taller and he seems more aggressive if you don't take, if you don't have that piece there, right? He just, he seems more power. He seems more powerful. The moment you put that, that thigh in there, it looks like he's crunching himself just a little bit and he's making himself a little yeah. bit small and you want to make him a king, right? And so the bigger one is just like he kicked open the door and he just fucking go, you know, I'm looking for Fred, right? Which one of you is Fred, right? So, but, yeah. um, last one, Vic. Okay, so now this one is one where I think it actually works that you've got the black in the front and the back. And the reason is because I'm not losing anything. Like, to me, I see everything I need to see in this. I see the head. That has to be instantaneous. So you have to be able to see sort of head and the shape of a body to know it's a human being or at least a humanoid, right? So, okay, and I guess we all know what a superhero looks like, so we read the cape because we've seen plenty of drawings of, of Batman in the shadows, right? So, okay, cool. I see the head. It's in shadows. I get piercing eyes. Now, here I do get piercing eyes because I don't have any green competing with them. And then I see I see the cowl. I So I see the two things going up. Okay. He's got nice broad shoulders. That's just, it's good. And then because you papered the, the cape uh, off on the right side of the page... I'm going to assume that he has a cape going down the other side. You put a little bit of light on the left side of the page so that it defines his shoulder. So my mind now is going to continue and finish the rest of his cape, right? Maybe you could have added just a little bit more light on that on that left side okay. of the page of the page just a little just a little bit. Um but even without it, I see it. And then, oh, by the way, you hit a second light so that some of it gets around the cape and, and then I see the skulls down at the bottom, which is cool because now I get to see the carnage. So not only is he a badass standing there, but it's like the badass is either standing in a pile of dead people or he killed the dead people or he eats the dead people. I don't know, right? It, it, yeah. it, 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 it conveys... It conveys something uh, that's there, and then again, it didn't, didn't look like. If you zoom in, Jake, can you zoom in on on that for a second? The chest. I want to see what the chest is. Yeah. So it didn't look like. Uh, uh, maybe as I get. Oh, okay. I was gonna say it didn't look like you. You worry too much about chiseling the chest or whatever. Else. Although as I see it getting bigger, maybe you did, right? I like so it's you probably you probably could go in there and soften that up just a little bit. Not you don't have to change okay. anything. Just soften yeah. it. Just soften it up just a bit so that it's just you know it 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 doesn't feel like it's robotic or something like that. But um, but uh, anyways, I like I like it. I, I, you possibly could play with uh, the that that god ray that you have behind him, the lighting effect you have behind him, just to tweak it just a little bit so that the character the character's color is slightly different. Doesn't have to be dramatically different. I kind of like that you've got this sort of in a monochromatic sort of fashion, but just uh, just a little bit different so that. It, the, the the red reads maybe on the character just a little bit because there's no true red in the light, right? So maybe you just punch up a little bit of the red to make it just a little bit more obvious uh, on that page. But that's that's a hell, that's a hell of an image. I like it. So all three all three of the all three of those the compositions were good. 
the paint, your paint execution is good. Even some of the lighting, like, I, like again, I'm, I, I don't know how you guys pick these people, Jake and Remy, but uh, all these, all everybody I've seen so far, I, I can close my eyes and see them down the line and go, yeah, they, they could all get there. So, but that's, I, uh, I that's picked cool. The first five people. Oh, the five, okay. Oh, that's cool. That's super cool. So, Nemo, keep it up because you're, you're going to get there, but. Awesome. That's great to hear. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to be moving on to our last one. We also lost uh, Rem. He told me he has a bad connection. Ben, uh, Rem's getting soft on us. Yeah. Thank you, Nemo, for coming up. Appreciate you. Thank you so me. much for yeah. the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Nemo. It's a one in a lifetime chance. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, and then now I get to do Ram's job. We got uh, JP coming up last. Uh, JP. Yep. JP, what are you doing, dude? Hi. Okay, can you hear me, sir? Yep. Okay. Uh, hello, um, JP. <laughs> Thanks. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Sure. We appreciate yeah. you submitting your artwork. All right. Sorry about that. And uh, also remind me, JP, because you have a bit in your portfolio. I couldn't quite remember which pieces you wanted to review. Oh, uh, I think it's the first five uh, from my portfolio. Okay, perfect. That makes it easy. Do you want me to scroll through them real quick first, then? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so just go first. Just start at the first, whatever you can start at the top and you can scroll. All right. Um so we've got the classic uh spawn at the top of a building or gargoyle or whatever else. Cool. Um I'm not a big fan, but again, others are and other comic books do it, but just I'm just gonna make the comment. I'm not a big fan of colors that are not real, right? So I always always tell my colorist, if you've never seen it with your eyes or you've never seen it sort of in a real drama movie, don't color it, right? So I don't know. I, I, I don't see a lot of purple skies, right? What I do see is a lot of kind of blue, gray skies. Like, then make it blue, make it, make it, make it blue or gray. That's, that's what a sky looks like, right? Because if, you, if the sky is believable, then the character seems more believable. Um, and so I've done this before where I've gone in and people hand me their colorings and then I just literally lasso the background and, and, and do a slider and change it so that it's more realistic. And I go, there, there it is. There's the color. All right, boom, done. Uh, we're good. Um, so anyway, uh, you've got a realistic sort of city behind there and you're trying to do a realistic cloud. So I'd, I'd stay on it and just use tones that seem like colors you would see in a movie, like a, like a real movie, not a superhero movie, a drama movie, like a real life movie. Um, but um, on the cape, you got a nice big cape. I like it that you've got it, that it's swinging to one side or the other. Um, I'm going to go back to the same comment I made with Josh. <clears throat> Watch out that you don't make all your lines the same. So, so zoom in, zoom in uh, on the top half of that cape there, Jake. And this is always easier if I'm. You can you can go even further. Um, if I was doing this and I had Photoshop, I'd do it. But if you take a look at the wrinkles that are to the left of his head, right? There's one, two, three, four, right before you get to like. 
down by his knee. There's four there. And essentially the four, JP, are about the same length left and right, right? So the width of them about the same. And then the, the, the wrinkles are about the same thickness, right? So there's not, there's not a lot of variety. So the wrinkles are in the same direction, the length of them are the same direction, and the height of them are about the same. And this is that whole thing where I'm just saying, you, you know, watch out for your repetition. If you go now further to the left of it, and then you got this little triangle that comes sort of up uh, into the purple, right? And you see how you've got like a black highlight on there, right? That would be one of those spots where I would have just gone, don't, don't put that black there, right? Because then that would have been a big patch of red. And that red then would be a lot different than what you've done. But at first glance, and I think you see it now if you shrink it, Jake, that, that a lot of the wrinkles on that cape are kind of the same thickness. They might not be the same shape, especially if you go down low, like what's happening by his leg. But because you put a, a shadow on each one of them, the thickness of the red, the, the racetrack, if you will, of the reds, are kind of about the same. There's no big piece of red. The biggest piece of red you have, which is correct, <clears throat> is on the, on the cowl, right? Cool. But he has a big giant cape and I don't, I don't know. It's a weird thing that how many artists want to wrinkle his cape where to me, I'm, I, to me, it was always like folding paper, right? If you saw how I did a lot of my cape, a lot of it was folding paper. It was just like, okay, if I was making a paper airplane, you just take a piece of paper and you fold it and you get these sharp edges. And I was always creating sort of geometry that was just folding up and over on it. Um, and the reason that I say that, uh, JP, is because if you do too much detail in the cape or whatever else, then the problem is when you go to the body and you start doing even more detail, then you get lost. And then if you look at some of the rendering that you did in the gargoyle or whatever that he's sitting on, um, it looks like there's a pair of eyes and then... I don't know. There's some kind of ribbing effect happening that's going above the eyes of the gargoyle all the way up to Spawn's hands. But again, that that ribbing and the in in the shadowing on that again is sort of a little bit repetitive. Oh, and by the way, the gray thickness is kind of about the same thickness as the cape wrinkles. And this is where if you didn't do any of that, that was just a big slab of gray there it would make what he's standing on way more impressive. Um, because, like, put your thumb over it, Joseph. I don't know if you can see your own screen. But put your thumb over that gray. And imagine if that was, like, mostly gray with a little bit of rendering. How, how different that would look compared to his cape, right? And then as soon as you take your thumb away, minus the color there's a lot of sort of the same sort of shapes and stuff in there. Um, so uh, again, I'm, I, I start to get to the point where I start repeating myself because it's sort of like four or five rules that I think sort of just need to be adhered to um, and they can get there. Uh, if we go into the arm on the right, Jake, this is a little bit what I was talking about earlier, JP, where you don't want things to sort of parallel the page. And you've bent his arm now at a 90 degree angle so that his shoulder to his elbow uh, is parallel to the top of the page. And then his elbow down to his fingers is going straight and it's paralleling the side of the page, right? If you had just taken that arm and just tilted it either further down or further up, you would have had two different angles that wouldn't have been anywhere as like close to what the edges of the paper are. Um, and so you want to you wanna keep track of that. Um, I like that you turned his head, which is cool. You've got his body slightly turned. So again, there's some of the stuff that I was saying. You've got one knee that's up, one knee that's down. So again, uh, you've got some nice variety there. So that's good. Uh, what else you got, Jake? Yeah, 
So let me zoom in on this. So I'll go to panel one. So, okay, cool. Um, uh, I like it. So it looks like it's Batman at the top of the building or something like that. It's cool. Yes. That, um, that's Batman. Okay, cool. It's, uh, so you've got a lot of gray in the city. Um, I think Batman's cape could have had less wrinkles so that it doesn't look like the building that's off to the to the right of him, right? Uh, you got like some streaks of light in that building. And if you look at Batman's cape, you sort of got some streaks of wrinkles on him. I think you could have added a lot more black to his cape and it would have really made him way more foreboding. It would have made him solid and then he would be solid, sort of like what you did with the gargoyle uh, that's in the bottom right there. Um, and then he would have been almost solid black. You could have probably made him 90% black. And then, and then it would have really made him monolithic uh, and seem like a sentinel being looking down at the frail, thin lines of the city, right? Like, again, put your thumb over that cape. Put your thumb over that cape and go, if that was black, and that was like a big, heavy chunk of black. Him looking down there, he'd seem sort of, sort of bigger and menacing. Um, if you're gonna do wrinkles or whatever else, again, uh, like I was saying earlier, you're gonna see a little bit of repetition in the thickness of all those wrinkles, right? There's not one patch of it that's like dramatically bigger than anything else. And this is the variety that you got to just constantly be aware of. And the reason for it. JP, is because you've got a city that is perfect and it is linear and it is symmetrical in places. And so your heroes have to be fighting against all the things that are already in his world, in the world, that are already perfect. You've got to try and get them and separate them from some of it. Uh, so uh, you want to keep away from the city as much as possible. Uh, if you scroll down on that same page, Jake. Keep going. No, it's not bad. It's not bad there. Again, you've you've left obvious space underneath the car. I'd put word balloons down underneath there. This is what I was talking about earlier. If I'm as a writer, I'm going, oh, okay, cool. Even 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 if I'm a writer, and a lot of people write full scripts, I don't. I'd look at this and I'd go, eh you know what, he didn't do a lot of rendering. It's not a lot of detail down at the bottom of the page. So I, I would intentionally put a caption and or a word balloon or a couple word balloons down there, right? Maybe even a sound effect, whatever, who knows? But I would fill that in. So all of a sudden, if you take your finger now, uh, JP, and you, and you put your finger in like what's underneath the car and you fill that in, then all of a sudden that panel feels like it's a lot more detailed, right? because I filled in some of the negative spot. But it's, it's a smart negative spot because I know exactly where to put my word balloons on there. So that was a, that was a good move. You're, uh, I would argue being a little bit polite with the nose of the car, breaking into the character that's on the left. Just, it's just barely touching them. Those are what I call tangent lines. Like you could have pushed that car a little bit bigger, right? It, you could even cut that car out, made it, let's say, 20% bigger and put it back on there and made it eat behind the hand a lot more. Uh, it, would, it, would, it would create a lot more uh, illusion of depth uh, on that panel. Uh, let's see the bottom one. Mm. Yep. Again, uh, don't be afraid here that the hand's coming in, the hand with the crowbar could be bigger, right? That it, it's because I'm trying to land on something. Um, and I don't want the rendering of everything to sort of kind of feel the same. I could, I could circle. I can't do it here, but you know, if I look at the, 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 the fist with the crowbar, there's a little bit of black there. Then if I look at like the black that's in his jacket, it's about the same amount of black. And then if I look at the other arm that's grabbing the guy, uh, 
there's about the same amount of black. And then if I look at like the steering wheel uh, in front of the fingers, there's a little bit of black there. And so you're putting in black and I like it. But now again, just like I was saying with Batman, you got to create patches of it so that it's, there's, there's more variety uh, that's in there. Um, so I think you could have made the hands way more bigger than what it would allow you to do is make the guy who's got his, who's getting grabbed, you could have made him bigger so that the guy then that is on the other side of the car would seem a lot smaller. Uh, and you would create that foreground, midground, background a lot. Like, I mean, you've created it, but you got polite about it. And to me, I'm always way more, stuff in the foreground is way big, and the stuff in the middle is medium, and the stuff in the background is small. Like, bam, 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 right? And it, and, and it doesn't feel like it's compound, and it's close, and it's compact uh, that's on there. So what else you got? So this is, uh, yeah, yeah. So I like, I liked it. Uh, what's, what's happening? Oh, I see. Oh, it's a bot. Oh, I see. He's grabbing somebody. Batman. Got it. Yep. Got it. Um, again, uh, he's saving him from. It looks like getting run over or something like that. Um, but uh, again trying to figure out your posing so that the thickness of his thigh isn't sort of the thickness of his head, the, the guy he's saving his head. And if you look at some of the black, again, now you're laying in the black. There's nothing that's in the Batman's cape there that is dramatically thicker, thinner than like the bottom, his bottom thigh, Right. So if I look at the bottom thigh, if I didn't, if I didn't know, if I just cover up Batman's body and Batman's top leg, and I just look at his bottom thigh real quickly, and I look at his cape, mm, I can get confused a little bit. And this is what I was saying before that that a thigh and cape can't, they, you can't render those the same. You're going to have to come up with a different way to convey both of those. I mean, you did a nice job with the uh, the truck that looked like it was going to run him over. That that that's completely different. Um, but uh, and uh, for Spider Man, it works. But uh, usually, when you do like a uh, worm's eye view, which is from the feet up, I, it sort of it you know you get big thick legs and you get this little pea head. Um, I always sort of like the other way where they're leaning towards you. So their, their heads feel sort of a little bit more menacing. Um, but there's, uh, there's, a, I think a stronger way to draw Batman so that he came forward and almost was tackling him like a football player getting tackled. Uh, and so he would be forceful instead of sort of swinging back so that his head is so tiny that you're losing, you're losing him on here. But um, the guys that he's saving, his hand could have, cut more in front of his thigh, Batman's thigh. See how you got his thumb that's just politely not cutting into any of his Batman's anatomy, right? I wouldn't worry about it, right? Get 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 stuff in the foreground, midground, background. Always overlap as much as you can to create that illusion. So but again, there's a lot of nice stuff in there. I take a look at take a look, like I said, at like Greg Capullo and how he moves the camera around. And I think you'll see it real quickly. And if you can apply some of that to yours, I think I think that'd be a nice sort of step forward in your artwork because you're doing a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Again, Batman. Look at it, look at look at, like uh, look at the Batman in the panel two. It's all black. I see him, and then you got you got detailed. Cityscape, cool. That's it. There, there's a nice contrast there. But then you go to the next panel, and again, all the wrinkles are about the same in the cape. Um, I'd even argue in, in the last panel, Batman frowning or whatever, you know, the rendering around his eyes, above his eye, below his eye, his eyebrow, uh, on his forehead, it's kind of a bit of a star effect, and it, it's all kind of the same. 
you could have made one side of his head probably 90% black. You didn't have to have to overthink it a little bit. So, And there's the color version of it. All right, so it all, it all works out a lot better when it's colored. And, and again, I'm not saying that color isn't our friend. I'm just saying that when you're starting, you want to try and make it as clear as possible pre-color uh, so that if then you get a good colorist and it just becomes dazzling then at that point instead of trying to do the separating for you. So, but all right. So for our first evening of portfolios, those were a good pick. I mean, again, if you just randomly pick them, then we've got a lot of talent in the pool here. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, some of the people that didn't get up on stage that had some art, they can get on next time. And or there were comments here that you can look at your own artwork and see if you're maybe making some of the same sort of, I don't want to call them mistakes, learning, learning process. Because I made, I made, I, I did all of it. And then you just become aware of it and you start paying attention to it yourself. So that's, that's it for today. Appreciate everybody sort of sticking around. We'll do this again in the future because I think that was productive and it actually worked way better than I thought it was going to work. Um, so uh, I don't know, Jake, if you got any last questions or anything? Uh, only thing I would say is I know we, if we want to get through all of them, because we have about 35 more submissions that we yeah. need to take a look at. Um, yeah. We might have to up the pace a little bit. Well, what, yeah, what I would do is uh, then like just cut everybody down to like three pages, right? And then just pick three pages that are kind of different. And then I can go through it a lot, a lot quicker. So, I mean, this is a learning process for all of us myself too. But um, uh, yeah, I can, and I can just set a clock and just say, hey, everybody gets six minutes and then that way I can get through 10. I can get to, through twice as many in an hour. So. Okay. And everyone that's already submitted and has five pieces of artwork in there, that's fine. Uh, when I do reach out and contact you, I'll just ask you which three of the five you want uh, reviewed. Okay. Or just pick three that seem dramatically different. Could do that too. Yeah. All right. Appreciate appreciate everybody hanging around. Uh, uh, took a little bit longer than we thought on a Friday, but uh, anyways, we'll do it again because uh, I know that uh, me taking my portfolios to people and people talking about it was always very useful to me. Uh, doesn't mean that everything I say is right. You should get comments from as many different artists as possible, but it's just one more person's point of view on your artwork because never listen to your mom and dad and the neighbors because they can't draw. So they're just going to say, you're awesome. Um, go, go talk to the pros and get, get professional tips. So, all right. Hope everybody has a good evening and we'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks for joining us.